Thank you. Let's wait for the enthusiasm to go down to a more appropriate level. <laughs> and uh, nudge over here, because I've got to be near my very important box. Ooh. And just like the stand, because I pretend to be a professional. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm Dan Ridley from Edinburgh at the University, and I do apple eye research in the bit between growing trees and making things out of wood. And that's, that's kind of handy, because when I'm with foresters, I can pretend to know a lot of things about engineering, and when I'm with engineers, <laughs> I, can, uh, I can appear to know about forestry. Uh, but when I have to speak to both together, I pretend to be an academic. <laughs> and if there are academics present, well, I can still pretend to be an academic, because not even academics are sure what it is that academics are supposed to know. <laughs> so, uh, and yes, if they ask me what my uh, field is, I can say trees. Yeah, because then we can have a whole whole of that, because that's not a field at all, is it? It's a forest. <laughs> it's a forest for one of my jokes tonight. Okay, so wood is the ideal material for building things as long as what you want to build is a tree. <laughs> if you want to use it for something else, well, you have to deal with the fact that you're not really using it according to the original manufacturer's <laughs> instructions. And uh, the thing that makes wood different from other materials like steel and concrete and so on is that trees are a heck of a lot cleverer in material science than we are. Now, there is, of course, some uncertainty from it being a natural material, but engineers, well, they are used to dealing with uncertainty anyway. <laughs> um, I don't think I have enough time to explain <laughs> about the do stats class. But no, it involves some probability and quite a lot of arm waving and pointing at things that haven't fallen down and saying, see, <laughs> I told you it would be all right. <laughs> so, talking of uncertainty, I hope you don't mind, I have a little confession to make, and that is that I am a little bit nervous about saying the names of trees. I don't, I don't mean the common names. No, I can do that. I'm pretty sure I snuck three into my introduction without you noticing. <laughs> no, I mean the magical names. Not, mag not magical, Latin names. <laughs> Especially when you suspect that there might be people in the room with a more expensive education than you. <laughs> or some special knowledge of Romans. Um, so, those, yeah, those are a bit daunting. Um, yeah. So, I think we're going to have a look at an example. Here we go. An example ready. <laughs> Is that the right way around? I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I showed the camera. Yeah, that's, that's Douglas fir. Yeah. <laughs> Douglas fir. Sometimes called Oregon pine. Mm -hmm. But it's not a pine. It's not a fir either. <laughs> it's one of these. <laughs> Okay, so uh, uh, let's, let's do it. First thing, right, to give you a bit of courage, is to understand that you're going to be a bit wrong. <laughs> right? And this isn't really a language that's intended to be spoken. <laughs> right, Latin names, scientific names, they're, they're kind of like a, a language for reading and writing, or perhaps more these days more accurately, a copy and paste language. Yeah. So, as long as you can make a reasonable stab at it, and people know what you're talking about, and it doesn't sound too bad, then, then it's okay, isn't it? So, um, let's, let's deconstruct it. So, the first part of the genus, pseudo, which is, of course, Greek. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, pseudo, <laughs> that, that means false, lying, <laughs> untrue. <laughs> yes? And, and that's the thing, actually, about 80% of plant names, the Latin names of the genus, is not Latin. <laughs> or Greek. Some other language. Uh, the thing about Latin names is that they're basically lots of different languages, but the idea is that you say it in a kind of like Latin way. It's very much the approach to language that 1980s comedy, hello, hello, talk about. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pseudo, so that means uh, false. And then the next bit, suga. 
That's Japanese. <laughs> so uh, suga is uh, what we in English call hemlock. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's hemlock tree. Uh, but hemlock tree is not hemlock. Um, the hemlock plant, the one that Socrates drank, um, it's named after that because it smells a bit similar. Um, so, yeah. Um, the hemlock tree, it's not poisonous. So if you drink it, it being a tree is a bit of a choking hazard. <laughs> Don't recommend you do it. Okay, yeah, so hemlock. Uh, so what do we know? Fake hemlock. Pseudo suga. Yeah, we know so far that this tree that's not a fir or a pine is also not a hemlock. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's it. A, a Douglas fir is a not hemlock tree. <laughs> What's the last bit? <laughs> Ninis. <laughs> right. So this is named after the person who kind of like described it first. Um, Archibald Mingus, not Douglas, not David Douglas, don't get your classic Scottish plant hunters mixed up, not this close to Perthshire, no, <laughs> Mingus, because that Z is not the Z, it's the old letter Yoch, so that, that's why that's Mingus. Uh, this last bit is the bit that makes it sound Italian, <laughs> Latin. I don't really need to explain that, do I, because that ends in S, so that's that's the augmentation and the genitive reflection appropriate to the gender and number of people that are... You know that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's, that's Ming is the I. I, 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 I. <laughs> See, it could be worse, right? You can be honoured in a botanical name by having your name followed by an anus. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what have we got? What do we know? Uh, pseudo suga mingizia, or mingizia. The Latin heads can argue about that. <laughs> but that, that's, yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, no need to stress it out. <laughs> not, not panic. Because, like I said, you're going to be a bit wrong because there is no precisely right. And this stuff anyway, Latin names and even trees for that matter, they're human inventions. They're just kind of descriptions. They're usefully accurate, but they're not completely accurate. Trees and other plants, they don't know the rules that we make. <laughs> <laughs> and I rather suspect that they don't intend to learn them either. <laughs> so, where are we? Excuse me. I'm tonight pretending to be an academic. <laughs> and it's Friday, so I'm pretending to be marking. <laughs> just like a, yeah, dead bit of time to do the marking. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, back to the set. You know, remember when I said about uh, trees being the ideal material, that no, wood being the ideal material for making trees? It was a joke. <laughs> it's not. Right? Because if you want to understand wood or trees, you need to understand that wood is not about being a tree. And being a tree is not about wood. There are plenty of plants that grow wood. There are plenty of plants that grow wood that are definitely not trees. Right? You know that. No. Do. No. I didn't. <laughs> And there are plenty of things that we might reasonably call trees that don't really contain wood. Yes. So, pyre, for example, and palm. Okay. Yeah, and you might even say uh, bamboo. Although, mm -hmm. probably some of you are thinking, oh, bamboo, no, that's a grass. That's a grass, can't be a tree. Who, 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 who made the rule? <laughs> You made the rule that you can't eat a tree and a grass. <laughs> and what are they going to do about grass trees? <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Trees aren't really a thing in the same way that cats are a thing. Right? I mean, we all know what trees are, but you, you can't come up with a single universal de definition of one that works in all circumstances. So why, why do I say that trees aren't a thing like cats are a thing? Because trees, ironically, are not a branch. 
on the tree. <laughs> so we have, for example, uh, horse chestnut and sweet chestnut, yes. Uh, but despite the name, they're not closely related. In fact, horse chestnut is more closely related to broccoli <laughs> than it is to sweet chestnut. Excuse me while I check another student's group. <laughs> so yeah, um, the trees aren't the same. It's just kind of like an arbitrary, not an arbitrary definition. No. No. <laughs> It's more like a strategy, it's a way of being. Like pumpkins. Yeah, just story, it's not it. I think I've gone a bit off topic, haven't I? Yeah, where, where was I? I'm, I'm a little bit restless, where was I? <laughs> so, yeah, lately the idea of planting trees and preserving natural forests has become very popular. <laughs> Trees and forests provide a lot of nice things. And if using wood also sequesters carbon dioxide oh. for longer, then all the better. All, all the better. <laughs> but renewable is not the same as infinite, right? And we only have as much growing as anyone time as what's in the forest, right? So we can, just, we can no more go back in time 30 years and plant more trees than we can go back a million years and put more coal in the ground. So the plain truth, plain no. truth is that we're going to need a lot of wood. We always have and we always will. Right? We wouldn't be here right now if our ancestors had not been able to get wood when they needed <laughs> Serious bit now. <laughs> Currently, we only have a small number of commercial timber species, and continuing down this road is rather risky because it presents risks from climate change and from pests and diseases as well. Uh, but don't worry, I'm not going to give you a list of boring insects. Yeah. It's going to be too much. You can weep all over those to worry about. <laughs> So we need a greater variety of species in the forest to satisfy rising global demand um, and also try to tackle the biodiversity crisis as well. Um, so yeah, I suppose I'd better try and sum this up. Um, inject some hope and bring this back into what might loosely be defined as comedy. <laughs> this is where I need my box. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Because forestry and timber needs a variety of people and a variety of disciplines, and also people who are quite, not quite sure what they are. Um, and it also seems like we have a growing need for people who are quite good at maths and arm waving. And that special combination that ensures that things are going to be okay. So, thank you very much.